Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I am Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we're going to be reviewing a couple of mods from my Thrustmaster TH-8A shifter. Now, these mods are made by a company in Italy called 3D Wrap. They've been making 3D printed mods for quite some time now, and not only for the TH-8A shifter. They also make parts for the T3PA pedals and Logitech pedals and shifters. They also have an online 3D printing service where you can send them your own designs to be printed using your own specifications as far as materials used and any parameters that you may require. But for this review, we'll be sticking with the TH-8A mods, the short throw shifter mod, and what they call the Mod Cambio, a 3D printed insert that will give you more tactile feedback when shifting the TH-8A. So let's get to it. Now let's take a closer look at the mods that we're going to be doing on our TH-8A. First off, we're going to look at this one. This is actually a tactile feedback aid, and it's, they call it on their website the mod, M-O-D, Cambio, C-A-M-B-I-O. And it's a PLA printed part, of course, because that's what they do. And you can see inside of here that there are some grooves that they've left in when they printed it, or added, rather. And this is going to cause a notching sensation when we're moving the shifter shaft in between it. And it's made of, a, I'm not sure, it's a PLA, but I'm not sure what kind. It doesn't smell like ABS. ABS you can usually tell by the smell. And it has a kind of a very, it's a very tinky noise to it when it actually falls on. This is a hardwood ash table. And you can see the tinky noise it's making which it's, it's very stiff in other words. There's no flex at all to this thing. So it's going to be important that we follow directions and get some lubrication down inside of here or around the shifter's actual lever to make sure that it doesn't give us unnecessary wear in there. And of course we're going to be putting some lubrication on the back too. And it's got some grooves in the back. You see how they've left some of this on here as far as how it was built. And as there's a groove there, it's a locating groove that we'll see once we're installing it, what that looks like. And on the front, it's just a blunt surface. You guys are, it's hard to show black on the camera, but you guys should be able to see this okay. And it's got a couple of arrows here pointing up to make sure that you know that this is the top portion and it should be facing this way towards the front of the shifter. Now we also have this locking ring and that's going to slide down. Once we have this on, this is going to slide down on top of it, and then we can tighten that down with a little 2.5 millimeter socket cap screw they put in here, and they've got a nut on the other side. If you look in here, you'll see that they've actually cut into this 3D printed piece a slot that will accommodate that nut. So once the nut gets drawn into it, the nut won't turn, so you don't have to put a wrench on the other side. It'll kind of lock itself into the actual 3D printed material. And this feels pretty much the same as what this is, but of course, being at just a open loop like this, you can actually see this will move, which is a good thing because it's supposed to, so we can get some clamping pressure. Right, not a lot to see here with these two pieces. Right, <laughs> so let's get over to the short throw shifter mod. And this is cut so that the length of travel between both stops here on the top and bottom of your H shifter are shorter. So basically that's all it's doing. And if you guys, there's other modifications or mods to our, for our TH-8A for that, that performs the same function. Uh, Rickmotec, I did a review on that one, comes to mind. With this one being a little bit different than the Rickmotec, there's still some strings on here, but just the usual stuff that's left off of a 3D printing thing that usually fall off when you're using it. And they're not going to use on this, we're just going to be putting this on top and not using the metal plate on top of that. So, it's just bolt this on and you're good to go. So I thought this would be a good combination to put the short throw on the same time that we're putting this tactile feedback enhancer device, I'm calling it, or the mod Cambio. And yeah, there's not much else. Well, let's take a look at this. With this short throw shifter, which is kind of nice, Actually, it's necessary because this is going to be thicker than the thin metal cap that's on top of the actual TH-88 over here. So this is going to be thicker. That means the screws have to be longer to reach it. And these are, again, some socket head 
cap screws and they're 2.5 mil and I believe these are 3 mil as far as the M3 thread size on it. So easy enough, we'll just take this metal plate off, put this on, but in the meantime, we're gonna be putting this in. So what we'll do next is I'm actually going to do this a little differently. And I'll explain that once we get to a, I guess I'm just gonna call it assembly, no sense for a look inside. What I'm gonna do is pull it apart and pull the metal housing off the bottom so we can better see just exactly what this is doing and where it's sitting into the assembly. Now, of course, you don't have to do all that. All you have to really do to put this in is take the metal, obviously take our knob off, take the metal gate off, and then we'll take that little plastic ring underneath and get that loose and snip a, a little zip tie in there so we can get it loose and out of the way and over the shift lever and then simply slide this down and lube it. Right, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this bottom part off so we can get a better look at what's going on and where this is exactly, how it's positioning itself. And like I said, just get a better idea of what it's doing. So we'll get to that segment next. All right, so now we're actually ready to perform our mods. Now, this is a very simple thing to do. If, and I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be just so we can see inside and get a better look at what this little gizmo is actually doing as far as how it provides that extra tactile feedback, how it's sitting down in the housing, and how everything is making contact. So what we're going to do first, obviously, is pull the shifter knob off. Easy enough. Set aside. And then we're going to pull this H plate off. And I'm going to use a driver, and this just makes it a little bit quicker so we don't have to hang out too long and watch this. So let's get that done. Right, now the metal shifter plate comes right off. And I want to show you this, a couple of things about this. This has ramps on it. I'm calling it ramps. Or there's just radius, gently radiused edges on it to facilitate downshifting. Like if I was coming from the fifth to the fourth gear, it would kind of roll off of this and then this flat part on the fourth gear slot would catch it. At least that's the theory. If you're close enough to your shift and getting them right, it should work fine. But it's still easy to miss a shift if you're going too far when you're jerking it around and slamming it in gears. So yeah, but you can see these profiles are on there. It's pretty easy to see them. Now, this short throw modification has the same thing going on. And I'm trying to try to show you here if I can get some light on it. There it is. That this is the same thing. It's rolled off on this side. How well you're going to see that. And it's flatter on this side. So it's not as pronounced as the metal one because it's not quite as easy to see, obviously, but they are there. Another thing to take note of here is there is no sequential tab on this particular plate. In other words, what I mean is Obviously, when we want to use this Thrustmaster in sequential mode, you need to have a plate on there that has a tab that will press that little button. And that, when that button is pressed, it lets the Thrustmaster software know that this is in sequential mode now and we'll be doing this, or handbrake, or whatever the case may be. But that's the direction we're going to be moving the knobs, so the hall sensors are going to be oriented in the software to pick it up. Right. So, this does not have one of those tabs. This does. You can see right here. It's a little raised tab here. See the guy right there? Now this is just flat everywhere on it. Put this over here. So there is no facility for that. So if you want to use it as sequential, you're going to have to put this back on. But if you're using it as a sequential, well, you really don't need a short throw H pattern, do you? <laughs> so just something to point out to show you the differences. Right. Now, if this is all I was going to be doing, then it, obviously it's just a simple matter from this point on of getting the right orientation here, which really doesn't matter, but there is a logo on here, so I would put that towards the bottom. We'll put this on like this, and then we would just go ahead and use the longer black screws that was included with this kit, and go ahead and screw everything back down, and we're done. Then we'll have our short shift facilitated for us. Right, but we're going deeper because we are also going to be doing the mod cambia which is a tactile feedback mod which will give us a better tactile feedback when we're doing our shifts right so to do that you have to go a little bit deeper and if you were doing this just you know, just trying to do the mod and you, it's just two screws here which i'm going to do and then we'll take this off and you got to be mindful of a wire in here that has a zip tie connected to the frame underneath and we'll look at that in a second here 
but I am actually going to do this and show you how that's done, obviously. But I'm also going to go a step closer. I'm going to pull this metal housing off, like I said, in a closer look, so we can actually get a little bit better detailed look at what this is doing as far as when it's setting in there and how it sits in there and what these grooves are contacting. Just get a little more detail in it. So we've got two Phillips head screws here that we're going to have to take off to get this off. Okay, one here and one here. These four holes are for the screws that we already took off to take the plate off and that we'll use to put the plate back on. So let's get those guys out of the way. And I have a Phillips driver here to get those out. And when you take this cover off, be careful and mindful that because this switch has a wire on it, right? So you don't want to just jerk it off and break that wire because then you won't have sequential mode at all then unless you fix it with some solder. So we'll go ahead and pull these out. And these are little teeny screws, not very big at all. Okay, so be careful with them, don't lose them. Put them in our magnetic dish. There we go. Right. So now, this plate will come off. See how loose it is? But again, we have a switch here and there's going to be a wire attached to that switch. So we have to be careful about pulling this up. And what I'll do is I like to take this cloth piece here. You can see that cloth in there. It's just a dust shield, if you will, and pull the ring up the shaft like that. So it's kind of sitting up. And then once I have that, then I can actually see what's going on when I open it up. And I'll let you guys take a look in there. And you can see the wire. I can get a better look at it here. You should be able to see the wire in there. And it's actually got a zip tie. I don't know if you can see the zip tie, but I'm gonna pick this up again. Try to keep this out of the way so we can see what is going on here. All right, so there's a zip tie on there where the wire is. And we're gonna have to clip that little white zip tie in there, okay? So I just happen to have something to do that with, our little snippers. And be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to snip the wire, which actually you could do quite easily, I imagine, on this little deal here. So I'm going to get behind it a little bit if I can, get the right angle, and I'm not going to be able to show you this very well, but anyway, we'll just go ahead and get it done. There we go. So now the zip tie is zip, is unzipped, rather. This wire should be able to fall free, and the zip tie actually kind of fell down in there. I'll probably end up getting that out when I take the whole cover off. But that is something to to pay attention to when your zip tie falls down inside of there. So now I should be able to get this, have enough room here with this wire to pull this off, and I do. So this will just lay to the side like that, all right? And then we are ready to install the Mod Cambia. And that's just gonna slide right on. That's what you would do. You just slide it on here, and then you would actually, we wanna lube up the shaft down here and we want to put some lube on the front and the rear of this so that everything is greased up and you don't get any stiction or anything like that on it. So I am going to do that, but first I'm going to take this thing the rest of the way apart. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to put this back on here, turn this whole assembly upside down like this, and we'll continue on with our Phillips screws. There is, how many of these things are on there? Six. Nine, nine screws to undo. So we'll go ahead and get those out and give that'll give us a better look at what's going on. Okay, so now we've got some more screws hanging here, so I'm just gonna kind of keep this together until I can get them to come out. And there they are. I wanted to show you this if you ever do this to your shifter, that there are on this back slots here, there, the screws are actually longer than the ones on the fronts. The fronts are kind of small, right? And you can see my zip tie that I clipped has come out. It's good that's not going to stay in there and cause problems for us. So now what I'm going to do is pull this whole housing off the bottom, and that'll just come right out along with the little plug there comes right through it. So there's the metal housing. Now, let's go ahead and pull this black piece back off, our little dust shroud here with our switch on it. And now we've got this revealed. 
So that's the assembly itself. All right? So I'm looking at this thing, and the reason I did this was because you can see that there's actually a, a notch in here. There isn't one in the front, but there is here. And there is a little bit of a notch right here on the bottom part. See how well you guys can see that there. There it is. That's better. And, of course, we want it to be oriented towards the front. And that is going to be this way. The front is this way. Okay. And this is going to slide out down in here. And this bottom groove that we saw is actually going to be fitting on top of this little See this piece sticking up from the shifter assembly there. So it'll be sitting right on top of that. And that's already got some grease on it. So we don't have to grease that. And I'm not sure what the rear one is for because I don't see anything. It's all flat back in here. So I'm not sure why there's a rear notch in there. Maybe the previous TH8A had something there. I don't know. But before we put this on and see what it looks like when it's sitting in there, we're going to have to put some lube on this because obviously plastic being worn against this metal shifter shaft is going to cause a lot of friction and it'll probably wear this out pretty quickly, I would imagine. So we're going to try to keep that from happening. In fact, there's reports on the internet of people who have taken these and put them in previously and said that it lasted maybe a, few, a couple of weeks or even less before it started providing no more friction because obviously they had worn out these notches that are in the side of there. Right. So I'm going to use this. It's called light grease from a slick oleum. And this is a safe grease for O-rings. You can use it on bearings. It's kind of a synthetic mix, if you will. Uh, temperature tolerant on extreme ranges of temperature. I really like this grease. And of course, you could put a lot of different greases on this. You don't have to use this. But this is just something I use on a lot of stuff. And yeah, I really like the way this performs. Yeah, there we go. And it's a clean looking grease. Kind of clean. Ah. Nothing like the smell of grease in the morning. <laughs> now, I'm going to actually take a Q-tip to apply this grease. So I'll set this over here and start greasing it up. And instead of just greasing the shaft here, I'm going to grease inside of here and the shaft itself. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a little bit on my Q-tip there and spread it around liberally inside. Make sure we got it covered well. And then I'm going to take a little bit and actually put it on the shaft itself where I think it's going to be making contact. I'll set this down for now and gently get up underneath and put it over here too. All right, a little bit more. Because I don't want this to wear out. I'm going to leave it in. I'll probably leave it in forever as long as it lasts anyway. All right, so now. I'm going to take the other side of my Q-tip and lube the back and the front. So let's grab some more lube. And I'm just going to go right around here. Very easy. Right. So now I'm going to kind of get it on the front and try to keep it off my hands at every opportunity. Although there's nothing wrong with a little bit of grease on your hands. Okay. So that should do it. Now we just take this and set it aside. Over here on one of my grease rags. Trying to keep from getting too, mess, too messy here. Right, so now all we got to do is slide it down the shaft, and we're going to slide it down in the middle slot. I'm not sure if it matters really, but I'm going to go ahead and use the middle slot when I slide it on. And you can see with that grease on there, actually it went into the front one. <laughs> but we should be able to, well, let's just pull it back out and go with, there we go, go with the middle here. There we go. And you can see it just slides right down in there. Looks like we have enough clearance. Looks like it was printed properly. And I'm just going to take my thumbs and kind of push it all the way down like that. Right. Did get a little grease on me. But I'm just got a paper towel here to kind of clean that off real quick. Right. Now, now that we have that on there, I have to be very careful, obviously, because I'm still attached here. In fact, I'm going to do this. There's just a little plug here on that switch. See a little plug right there? I'm going to pull that out and just get this cap out of my way before something happens that I'm going to regret. All right, so now it's out of the way. So that's what it looks like sitting in there. And it doesn't go down any further than that. And I'll show you the other side too. So that's how it's working. And I'll see if I can actually do a shift here. 
trying to hold it. I have to be careful because this metal inside of this is very sharp and it can cut you. Ask me how I know. It's just kind of like the, the bare metal when you're going up to the dash of a car and you're trying to work on something under there. Yeah, there's, they don't really finish that metal off when it gets stamped out and they just, it'll definitely cut you. So, oh yeah, right away. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a difference in a good way. And of course it's popping up a little bit because we haven't put the lock ring on yet and we'll do that in a second. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely, now, now it feels like we're shifting something. All right, cool. All right, I, I was wondering just how much difference it would make, and it is making a lot of difference right at the moment. Of course, we don't know what it's going to be like, you know, a month or two months down the road after using it a lot, but we'll find out. All right, so now we don't have to grease this, obviously. We're just going to put this on and tighten it down. So we'll go ahead and slide that on. And again, you don't have to take this all apart to do this, but it's just so you guys can see what is going on when I do it. All right, so this slides right down on here, and it really... As far as the orientation, I don't really want it hanging off the side, I think, like that. I think I'm just going to do it like this, or I'd probably do it like that because it has more room on the front. And then it's just a matter of getting our wrench, and I'm just going to steal the wrench over here that I was using on the drill, and tighten it up. And as I'm tightening it up, I'm going to be pushing on it so that, remember, this little nut here, is going to pop down inside of a pre-cut hex pattern that they have on this to lock that nut down as we're, so it won't turn as we're tightening it down so we don't have to have a wrench for that. So I'm going to put a little pressure with my finger on that to get it to seat because I don't know what the perfect lineup is for that. It should twist around a little. Actually, it's not even... Well, it's gripping a little bit in that, I guess. And I can actually do this with my fingers. And this is actually coming all the way down now it's closing tight so yeah i can barely move it and that's good yeah i don't think i need to be any tighter because you can see that where this bolt is going through here it's already touching the, each other so if i if i tighten it anymore all it's going to do is crush it and you really don't need to do that and it's pretty tight as far as i'm trying to move it around with my fingers here I'm trying to get it to twist and it's just not Probably, yeah, I can move just a hair. But the whole thing is, you really don't have to worry about that so much, I don't think. I'm going to, let's see, try my shifts while that's on there just to make sure that's not interfering. I, had, I was a little concerned that it might interfere at the top there if you had it too close to the top of this block part. But it seems to be working. There we go. I don't know if you guys can hear that very well, but that is much, much better than stock. And it does move, well, it's not moving. The whole assembly is moving a bit, actually. The block itself is not moving. I thought they might be moving. But yeah, there it is. It's, um, it did come up a little bit when I was doing that. This lock ring did, so I guess it really doesn't matter if this floats up a little bit off the bottom because I can push that back down as long as this lock ring doesn't let it get any higher. So again, this is one of those things where you just have to use it and see how it's doing. Now, it needs to be a little bit higher in the, fr in the middle, it seems to me, because when we go rock back and forth on here, this actually changes the angle, obviously. And you can see how close it gets to the back of that block. And the same thing for the front. It's pretty close. All right, but it's not getting so close that we're hitting the front of this plate here, which we don't want that to happen with this little screw thing here. Right, all right, looks like we're successful. So. That's done, and now all we got to do is put everything back together, which is the reverse of what you saw me do when we took it apart. No big deal there. It's not very hard to do. And when we come back, I'll have it all back together, and we will have this short shift plate on there. And then we can put it on the rig and run it and see what we think as far as the improvement in tactile feel and in the shifts in general with the short throw accessory up here. All right, so now we've got the shifter all back together. And obviously, you can see that we have our 3D wrap plate installed in the right configuration. At least I hope it is. Got the logo down there. And first thing that I noticed is, yeah, there's a lot more tactile feedback now when I'm actually making these shifts. And that's to be expected because of the close tolerances that this lever is actually going through 
on that piece of 3D printed block. Right, so it's working as advertised. Now, another thing I like about this that I meant to point out before is this lever on these Thrustmaster TH-8As. If you look at it here, you'll see there's a little black section in here. What that is is just actually a piece of plastic. See it rolling around? I can actually push it with my finger and it rolls around. So what that does is makes us for a smoother shifting going through these gates, right? Now, if you saw the Rickmotec short throw shifter, it was so much higher that it really didn't engage this plastic piece. So it was actually rubbing on the shaft itself. And I can actually, I don't know how well this will show up, but there is some on the side here, just on this part of it. I don't know if the light will reflect it properly or not that you can see, but it's not too bad because this is a chromed hardened shaft here. At least I think it is. And yeah, it's not really showing too much scratching from, from using it on that Rickmotec. But it's nice that this is actually being engaged by these gates. I think that's going to give it a, some longevity, a longer life cycle, if you will, instead of just rubbing up against this metal here. And it'll, it'll be less wear and tear on the gates themselves, these little knobbies coming out. So yeah, I like that too. So, so far so good. It feels like, yeah, it definitely f gives you a better feel that you're actually making a shift because let's face it, out of the box, the TH-8A really, even though you can feel it, if you do it gently and are looking for that, it definitely is not a very convincing H pattern shift compared to this anyway. This definitely ups the game. So yeah, I already like that part of it. So right, what we're gonna do now is get everything mounted up and drive it. So here we are again at iRacing and Sebring in the Lotus 79. Again, one of my favorite combinations for testing things. And let's talk about the short throw shifter plate first. And there are other shifter plates that do the same thing out on the market and I actually tested one, a Rigmotech. And this one is made from PLA though. And this is the first PLA shifter plate that I've ever used. And so far so good as far as the wear and tear on this. I've been actually putting a few hours on it and I really can't tell any excessive wear or anything I would think that's cracking. I just can't find any flaws in it so far. Obviously it won't last forever, well, nothing will. But I think part of the magic here is that this plate is actually, when it's mounted to the TH-8A, is low enough that it still engages the nylon roller that is on the shifter lever. Whereas, say, one like a Rickmotec is higher, so it doesn't engage the roller anymore, and it just engages the metal part of the shaft. So I think engaging the nylon roller like that is a big plus. Right, and it does what it's supposed to do. It shortens the throw, and that just makes muscle memory easier to repeat and learn and just gonna make you overall more accurate with your H pattern shifting. Right, so let's talk about the tactile feedback mod, also known as the MOD Cambio. That's at least what the wrap calls it. And I have to say, this is one of the things that I noticed right away. It gives you a nice clunk to it as you're going through the neutral area of the shifter on the TH-8A and going up into a gear or coming back through a gear. And yes, it does what it's supposed to do. It does add that tactile feedback. And yeah, I, there's not much else you can say about it. It's, it's a pleasure to use it because it gives you more tactile feedback and anything that does that in my book is a plus. Now, again, this is also made out of PLA, so I can't stress enough that you need to follow directions here and apply the lube in the right places on that PLA block in between the shifter lever or you may have premature wear issues. I haven't seen any wear on it yet, but it's something probably you want to check once in a while just to make sure it's still not wearing too much and you're going to have to replace it. Right, so overall, this stuff works like it's supposed to. I can't find any real flaws with it. It just does what it does. And yeah, I think that's uh, really all I can tell you about as far as the driving impressions. And what we'll do is we'll get to the final thoughts segment next. Final thoughts on the Thrustmaster TH-8A mods from 3D Wrap. Both of these mods are very easy to install, so it won't take up much of your time getting them up and running. Now, once you have them on, you will notice an improvement to the shifting qualities of your TH-8A shifter. The shortened shift plate did help me improve my accuracy when making shifts. When you don't have to throw the shifter as far to complete a shift, 
it does give you a better sense of where the lever should be and that helps your muscle memory and just makes it easier to be more accurate with your shifting in general. Now, they use a 3D printing process to produce the plate and the material is called PLA. Now, that's a very common filament that is used in a lot of applications in different industries. The mod Cambio is made from the same PLA. Now, this mod is one of those things that are noticeable right away. The tactile feedback is improved when making the transition from gear to gear. Also, a rather simple item to install on our TH-8A. Now, being made from PLA and considering what it will have to endure, <laughs> I'm not ready to say that it will last a very long time, which makes it very important to follow the directions and use a suitable grease on the contact area between the shifter shaft and the PLA block. And be sure to periodically check for wear and re-lube the unit when needed. Now, if you do this, I think you will get a decent amount of use out of it before it needs to be replaced. If you do not do this, <laughs> I've read of some people only getting a couple of weeks of use out of it. So, do your due diligence here to keep this thing in good shape. Because these parts were 3D printed, I looked over 3D Wrap's website and saw that they also have a 3D printing service that even provides design assistance if you need it. So, you may want to check it out if you need some 3D printing done. <laughs> I'm Barry Rowland, and thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and help support the SRG by visiting our website at simracinggarage.com.